The peace of Christ Jesus be with you all. Nothing we can ever say will de do justice to the God who cherishes and nourishes us. Nothing we can ever do will be sufficient thanks for the God who redeems us. Therefore, when you come to worship, praise and exalt as much as you can. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful is the God of earth and heaven. My friends, please don't tire the discipline of Lent. God says, look, I am now doing a new thing as it springs to life. Do you even notice it? We press on towards the goal. Our prize is the uplifting call of God and Christ Jesus. Let everyone praise the grace of the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Amen. We will now have our announcements from our ruling elder, Dawn Clark, our liturgist for today. Good morning. Um, welcome to In Worship. Okay, let's start again and see if I can speak English. <laughs> uh, welcome to in-person worship. Live streaming will continue for those who are unable to attend. Face masks are required by those who are not fully vaccinated and by all during the singing per portion of the service. For visitors and members alike, the yellow attendance cards and pews are a direct communication to pastor. If you have a question, concern, a prayer request, or message, please fill out the card and place it in the offering plate. For those who wish to make an electronic donation, you can do so with your smartphone via Zelle or PayPal. Our address to donate for both payment services is donate at springfieldpresbyterian.org. All one word. Please contact Pastor Madeline or the church office if you have any prayer requests or announcements to share. Please contact the office if you would like to dedicate a floral arrangement for our weekly worship service. If you would like to host a fellowship hour, we have resumed the sign-up sheet on the info table in the uh, fireside room. Many thanks to Carol Kaiser for hosting today. For our members with young children, please call or text Lisa Guida by April 10th if you plan to attend the 9 a.m. Easter egg hunt on Easter morning. Um, and what I really want to say, this is the good news for the, the children because the Christian Education is hosting a light breakfast and egg hunt um, at 9 a.m. Uh, at the parish house on Easter Sunday morning. It's open to all of the church children. So that should be a fun affair. <laughs> um, volunteer hosts are needed if we are to enjoy the fellowship uh, after the Easter worship service. This includes the setup, food, and cleanup. Please sign up at the info table if you or a group are able to host that. Uh, now I'd like to uh, take an opportunity to mention and recognize Linda Amiano. Linda has been our clerk of session for a number of years now, and she's retiring from that position. She's much too young, but <laughs> she, <laughs> she uh, is retiring. So we would like to honor her, and um, we have prepared this uh, Certificate of Appreciation for her years of service. And uh, this certificate is awarded to Linda C. Amiano for her dedicated service to the First Congregation of the Presbyterian Church of Springfield, New Jersey, as Clerk of Session from March 2017 to April 2022. And so we will take the opportunity to give Linda her certification. But it's. <laughs> Dawn, I also want to make an announcement. Today I will be having training for elders immediately following worship service. So while you're having the fellowship, I will be in the corner training <laughs> our elders. Now, if anyone else would like to sit in, 
who may be interested somewhere along the line who would like to be an elder or a deacon, this would be the time for you to find out what elders and deacons actually do. The class will not be that long, so I won't detain you because I get right to the point. <laughs> but it would be nice, anybody else who's interested, to accompany the, our two members who have said that they would be elders. It would be nice. So immediately following worship service. So don't go anywhere if you want to attend this training. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Come on now. Oh. Just because it's raining doesn't mean you all have to be half dead. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Amen. Okay, for the two guys who just came in, I want to make... Uh, I'm going to repeat an announcement. Uh, the Christian Education is going to host a light breakfast and an Easter egg hunt at 9 o'clock on Easter Sunday morning at the parish house. So you guys are invited. <laughs> Just want to make sure you understand that. All right. Now can we um, move on? Uh, let's go to our centering words. This year can be our turnaround time because we serve a God who continually does new things in our lives when we are willing to let go of the past and lay hold upon the future with faith in God who continues to do all things well. Amen. 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 Call to worship. Please respond with the bold letters. Do you feel it? God's kingdom is beneath our feet. We live in the new creation shaped by God out of our brokenness. Do you know it? God's reconciling love in Christ has shattered our ways of viewing people. No longer do we label our sisters and brothers. We welcome them with open arms. Do you believe it? God has made everything, including us, new and sends us forth to share this good news with everyone. Um, my opening prayer. God of love, you have loved us first and continue to love us. We come this morning longing to love you in return. We hunger for your healing love in our lives as we long to love ourselves and our neighbors. Fill our longing hearts as we join together to worship you. Amen. Uh, now we will have our opening hymn, 634, To God Be the Glory. So I'm going to ask the children to come forward. How are you guys this morning? Yeah, you can be right over there. Stand over there. Hello.
children of God. Let me put on my mic since I stepped away. What are some things that are valuable? What does it mean for someone to have value? Do you know? Okay, so let me show you two pictures. Here's a picture of a ring. Now, do you think this is something of value? Yes. And how much do you think this ring costs? $19,999.99. Wow. If anybody gave me a ring like that, I'd be really excited. But that never happened. Not in my lifetime. Now, here's another one, another ring. What do you think about this one? Do you think the stone is a little bigger? Yeah, you think so? A little bit, huh? Because it's in black and white, so you can't see it too good. But guess how much this ring is, is worth? Now, the other one was worth $20,000. This one is worth $190,000. Now, which ring would you be more apt to want? This one, the one for $190,000, or this one for $20,000? Which one? Which one are you pointing to? The one that's worth $20,000 or the one that's worth $190,000? You, yo, he take the low road. He take the twenty thousand one. What about you? You take the oh, you take the twenty thousand one. What about you all? Which one would you all prefer? Twenty thousand. I heard somebody say no. Who would prefer the one that's a hundred and ninety thousand? <laughs> Me too. But again, that ain't gonna happen. So, when it means what it means to have value, it means there's something that costs a lot. We refer to this term when talking about something that is worth a lot of money. For instance, as I held up these two pictures, this is what we talk about, the cost of things. But I have something else here that is very valuable to me. I have a ring that my son gave to me. I don't want to use the wrong finger. And... This ring he gave to me when he was a young man, teenager. And I always wear this ring. It's a cross on the ring. It has a little ruby. My birthday is in July, so my stone would be ruby. And it means a lot to me. So for all these years, because my son is now going on 50, I still keep this ring. It means a lot to me. I don't know how much it costs, and I don't care. Because all I know is that my baby gave it to me. Have you ever given or received a special gift? Think real hard. Anything from you? What'd you get? You, what, hon? A piece, a PS4. Does anybody else know what that is? It's a PlayStation. See, I don't have any grandchildren and any young people in my life, so I had no idea what that was. So it's a, play <laughs> it's a PlayStation. That's nice. So do you value it? Do you take care of it? Do you make sure that you keep it in good condition so nothing harms it and that you don't abuse it in any way because it means that much to you? Most of the time. So if you break it, you figure your father is going to get you another one? No, I don't think so. So that means you've got to be real careful with it, right? Do you share it with your brother? He does play with it. 
Okay, that's nice. What about you, Adore? Nothing. You can't think of anything that's been given to you of value? Not even a value, just a special gift that someone gave you. A necklace. Okay, tell me about the necklace. What was special about the necklace? But what else made it special? Not just because it had diamonds in it, but it was special because of what other reason? Because somebody had to have given you that necklace, right? Who gave you the necklace? Your mother. So because your mother gave you the necklace, it's not so much how much the necklace cost or even the diamond that's in the necklace. It's because your mother gave it to you, just like my son gave me this ring. So that means you value it. Do you value it? Do you put it in a jewelry box? And No, you don't do any of those things. But you do make sure that you take care that nothing happens to it, correct? So that's something of value. Here's another question. If you were going to give Jesus a present, what do you think you would give him? Now, that's a deep question. I want all of you all to think about that, too. I'll repeat it. If you had to give Jesus a present, what would you give him? Excuse me? Yes. Yes. Jesus said there's no greater love than to give your love to your fellow brothers and sisters. He loved you just like we love him. So yes, love is very important. Did you all figure that out? Love? So now you know. So if Jesus walked in the door right now, how would you show him your love? Huh? You would welcome him, yes. How else would you show him your love? A hug. Yes, thank you. A kiss. You know, when I ask people to pass the peace of the Lord before the pandemic, I would say, when you greet your neighbor, give them a kiss, a hug. Just look in their eyes and say, I love you like Christ loved you. Because of the pandemic, I don't want to be putting that on you anymore. But that's the first thing that should come to your mind is love. So Jesus had come to have a dinner at the home of Lazarus. That's today's scripture reading. Who he raised from the dead. Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus, were there. And Mary did something very special for Jesus. She took a special expensive perfume and poured it on him. In fact, she put it on his feet and then she wiped it with her hair. Have you have any expensive perfume at home or your parents that you know of you may not know it do you have any perfume that you know of at home you do okay your mom has it yeah, I didn't think you were going to use perfume so that's valuable perfume is cost more than cologne and toilet water and other things so you value that so if Mary did that poured the expensive perfume on Jesus' feet, that meant that she poured something very valuable. And there are a few things here that might sound strange. For one thing, why would perfume oil cost so much? It was worth about a year's salary. Well, this was special oil that was normally used in burial. In those days, people would put a lot of perfumes and embalming oils on bodies before placing them in the tombs. Mary was, in a sense, getting Jesus ready for his death. That may seem odd to us, but Jesus deeply treasured the act. One of the disciples, Judas, criticized her for it, saying the money should have been spent helping the poor. Well, that wasn't really what Judas wanted, because he was a thief and a traitor. But he acted like that was his intention. Jesus told Judas that Mary's actions were beautiful, she has shown Jesus her love and care and done something that was precious in his sight. Jesus appreciated that the anointing was done out of her heart and for a place of genuine care. Now, if you were back in Jesus' day and you were Mary and you had that perfume that was very expensive and you didn't want to use a drop of it unless you used it on yourself, would you have been able to do what Mary did to get down on her knees, take that expensive perfume, and pour it on his feet. Would you have done that? 
Adora said yes. Would you? Yes. I think the answer would be yes for all of us as Christians. Because he's a king. He was our king. He was our savior. So that made it even more special what she did. So you know Jesus values us too. He loves and blesses every gift that we bring. We all have gifts. You know, there was a time when I asked people, what are your gifts? And people would look at me blank. Like they didn't really think they had any gifts. We all have gifts. You may not think your gift is important more than somebody else's gift, but every gift is important to God. This great thing is that we don't have to bring expensive fancy offerings to him. We don't have to bring expensive gifts to our Jesus. Jesus wants you. He wants your heart, your time, your talents, and your love. All that we have comes from him, and we can show gratitude by giving back to him. This might mean something as simple as praying or reading God's word. It might be helping and serving others. Maybe you don't think you're very important or don't think God can use you, but he has made you and he loves you. Jesus can do amazing things with you in our lives when we are willing to be used by him. Are you willing to be used by Jesus? Yes, no, maybe so? Yes? What are some ways that you think that you can be used with whatever gifts you have or with just yourself? What do you think you can do to be used? Think about maybe when you're in school and somebody is sitting in a cafeteria by themselves or somebody has said something about somebody and kind of singled that person out to make them feel bad. You could go over and you could sit with that person and say, listen, God loves you and so do I. Jesus loved me first before I loved him. I know you probably wouldn't say that because when you're in school, you don't really think about that too much, but it's true. And you can be used in that way. You could be used at home by helping mom and dad. When they come home from work and they're tired, you can say, mom, let me take your coat off for you. Or mom, let me give you something to drink. Or mom, let me give you something to eat. There's so many things that you can do to be used by Jesus. So I want you to think about it. And the next time I talk to you, you come back and tell me all the things you did that you were used to do. And it only has to be good things, not bad things. Okay? Is that okay with you? Okay. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for valuing us. And we ask you to help us love and serve him. Serve him. You, God, are more valuable than anything else. Please help us to honor and prize you. We offer you all of who we are. Help us to serve and honor you. We love you, God. And thank you for Jesus. And we pray in his name. Amen. All righty then. You can go back to your seat. There's no Sunday school today because we're having communion. Now we will have our call to confession. As we offer our prayers of confession, remember that God chooses to forget about our past forgiving us so we may embrace the new life and new hope offered to us in grace. I invite you to join me as we pray together the call of confession. Almighty God, we confess that at times, even when we do our best, we fail. We are not perfect. We sometimes do not recognize when our words or actions when we mean well, can cause harm. We miss signs and cues from others. Call us into accountability and show us mercy. Instill in our hearts kindness and compassion for others and ourselves. Teach us how to forgive well 
in ways that protect ourselves from further harm, but extend the same mercy you have extended to us. Forgive us when we have failed to notice the harm we have caused and help us to correct our faults and make amends as best as we are able. It is a blessing that we are not perfect. It is a blessing that we make mistakes. It is a blessing that we have opportunities to grow and learn. God created us to change. Let us offer forgiveness and give space for one another to learn and grow. For God has shown us abundant mercy, grace, forgiveness, and healing. Amen. Let us take a few moments to take our sign of confession to our Lord. And now let us stand and sing our glory to God whose goodness shines on me. As we move into the reading of the scriptures, uh, I'm going to ask for a prayer of illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed. We, be, we may be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to... Read from the Old Testament scripture, Isaiah, um, chapter 43, 16 through 21. And I'm going to read the New Revised Standard from the Re New Revised Standard Version. Uh, let's see if we can get my eyes here going. Um, I love being old. and <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here. Uh, Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings our, out chariot and horse, armor and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished. 
quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I will be reading from the New Testament scripture from the Gospel of John, beginning with chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, and I also will be used in the New Revised Standard Version. Now, prepare to hear the words from our Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume, made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped him with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept a common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on the account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. My message to you this morning is entitled, Leave Her Alone. Let us pray. Let our mouths be filled with laughter and our tongues be filled with joyful shouts as our Lord does great things for us. Amen. A little girl hugged her grandmother and said, Mmm, you smell so wonderful, grandmother. Is that oil of old lady? <laughs> Have you ever noticed how a particular smell or aroma can bring back memories? You smell something, and before you know it, your mind has taken you back to when you were a child. One of the traditions I look forward to in the Episcopal Church was the sweet scent of incense especially during the high holy days. Fond memories of that time comes flooding back from my old church. Scientists say that while words go to the thinking part of the brain, smells and fragrances go to the emotional part, the amygdala. That's why a whiff of that incense also brings back for a brief moment the time that my family all worshiped together and why a bit of incense is the smell of the divine period in my life. This passage from John's gospel is a fragrant text. Jesus' friend, Mary, she's only named in John, takes a box of very expensive perfume, and with it she bathes the feet of Jesus. Scholars say that the perfume was worth in today's currency as much as $10,000. It may strike you as strangely sensual when Mary wipes the perfume into his feet with her long flowing hair. It's an amazing scene. Matthew's Gospel 26, 13 adds a memorable remark from Jesus. I tell you the truth, that wherever in the whole world this good news is announced, what she has done will always be told in the memory of her. Incredible. Jesus actually said that whenever the gospel story is told and wherever it is told, 
The thing that Mary did will always be talked about. 2,000 years later, in a place halfway around the world, what Mary did long ago is still being told. It is a lasting tribute to a woman's love for Jesus Christ. I think Mary wanted to demonstrate that she loved him and that she understood as he set his face toward Jerusalem and the cross, the pain he was about to bear. She wanted to identify with him in a way that he had identified with her so long ago in her own struggles. Mary expressed her love in this profound, lovely way. But there is a cautionary reality to what Mary did. Our gospel lesson captures a significant moment during the final days of Jesus' life. Today we hear a story of incredible love. The journey to Jerusalem that our Lord predicted during the Epiphany season has become a cold reality as Holy Week approaches. John tells us that Jesus is at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, a place that was an island of serenity for him during a troubling time. Storm clouds are gathering around Jesus' head. The Pharisees in the temple posse were nipping at Jesus' ankles and plotting his destruction. Our Lord speaking with the Samaritan woman at the well, healing on the Sabbath, and eating with the unclean has essentially drafted his death sentence. His decision to return within five miles of Jerusalem in order to raise his friend Lazarus from the dead has given his enemies an opportunity to pounce on him and bring a quick end to this Jesus moment. But for a little while, all the ugliness and threats are pushed back as Jesus settles into the quiet oasis of his friend's home in Bethany. His friends have scheduled his meal to thank Jesus for bringing Lazarus back to life. Soothing conversation creates a sense of well-being. Wonderful smells begin to emanate from Martha's kitchen, and Jesus experiences a rare moment of joy and serenity. No doubt our Lord sat close to his friend Lazarus, everyone politely avoiding the reality that Lazarus is the cause for bringing Jesus to Jerusalem and exposing him to all the danger that surrounded him in the holy city. Jesus once said, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for a friend, John 15, 13. And bringing Lazarus from the dead, Jesus put into practice what he had preached and soon we paid the price, proving the truth of that old cliche, no act of kindness goes unpunished. Scholars agree that the raising of Lazarus was the last straw insofar as the Sanhedrin, the Jewish authorities, were connected. John quotes their alarm over the growing influence of Jesus, which brought one of them to say, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation, John eleven forty eight. And so the chief priests were active in their plotting to bring Jesus down. They said, when is this going to end? Let's get rid of the criminal Jesus and then the evidence, namely Lazarus. Yet, here is Mary. I wonder if Mary knew that Jesus was about to die. I wonder if she sensed that events would end in some horrendous, cladicalismic way. Maybe she had a feeling that perhaps it was only a few days away. It seems that perhaps Mary was the only one who understood. I wonder if Mary broke her clay of expensive perfume to show Jesus that she got it. After all, she had wanted to anoint Jesus like a king. She would have anointed his head. You only anoint the feet of a dead person. And I think Mary understood it. Mary got it. Where is Mary every time we come across her? She is at the feet of Jesus. She's always at the feet of Jesus. There is something very special about people who spend a lot of time at Jesus' feet. They have what one might call a sixth sense. When we practice the discipline of spending time with God in prayer and scripture every day, we develop a maturity that leads to special discernment. The only person who has that kind of spiritual insight and understanding are the people who sit at the feet of Jesus. Hmm. Mary did that. That's why I believe Mary understood. She got it. I know that we live in an instant society. 
I understand that we have instant everything. However, there is no substitute for taking the time day by day to sit at the feet of Jesus. Only in John's version of the story does a woman have a name, Mary, and a relationship with Jesus. Not a stranger, not a notorious sinner, but his longtime friend, which makes her act all the more pe peculiar. He knows she loves him. He loves her too. So why this public demonstration, this odd pantomime in front of all their friends? It's extravagant. It's excessive. She's going overboard, as Judas is quick to note. Why wasn't this perfume sold for a whole lot of money and given to the poor? That's what G Judas wants to know. But Jesus brushes him aside. Leave her alone, he says. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me, which is an odd thing for him to say, as what Mary did. Here is the champion of the poor, always putting their knees ahead of his and suddenly reversing course. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Just this once, let her look after me because my time is running out. Whatever Mary thought about what she did and whatever anyone else thought in the room about it, Jesus took it as a message from God. Not the hysteric actions of an old maid gone mad, but the carefully performed act of a prophet. Everything Mary did was significant. How dare Judas, the betrayer, a known thief, challenge her act? Mary's prophetic act revealed the truth. She was anointing Jesus for his burial. When Mary stood before Jesus with that pound of pure nard in her hand, it could have gone either way. She could have anointed his head on everyone there, could have proclaimed him a king, but she did not do that. Mary could have used a towel. Rather, she wiped the Lord's feet with her hair. Respectable Jewish women never let down their hair in public. In fact, it was considered a mark of a woman of loose morals. But Mary was so caught up with her devotion to Christ that she did not stop to consider what others might think about her. And when she moved towards him, she dropped to her knees instead and poured the perfume on his feet, which can only mean one thing. The only man who got his feet anointed was a dead man, and Jesus knew it. Leave her alone, he said to those who would have prevented her. Let her finish delivering the message. So Mary rubbed his feet with perfume so precious that a sale might have fed a poor family for a year, an act so lavish that it suggests another layer to her prophecy. There will be nothing economical about this man's death, just as there has been nothing economical about his life. In him, the extravagance of God's love is made flesh. In him, the excessiveness of God's mercy is made manifest. This bottle will not be held back to be kept and admired. This precious substance will not be saved. It will be opened, offered, and used at a great price. It will be raised up and poured out for the life of the world, empty to the last drop. Before that happens, Jesus will gather his friends together one last time, another banquet, another supper table with most of the same people present. Jesus will strip, tie a towel around his waist, and wash his disciples' feet. Then he would give them a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus washed his disciples' feet as an act of great humility that we should follow. At least one of the disciples, Judas, will argue with him that Mary is wasting precious resources, while others will wonder if he has lost his mind. But a few will watch him working on their feet and remember, Mary bending over his feet like that. The prophet Mary, who knew how to respond to Jesus without being told. The one who acted out his last new commandment before he even ever said it. If you give yourself without reserve to Jesus, you will be criticized. And the loudest criticism, criticism will come from church members who will say that they are only using common sense and how the Lord's resources are spent. When Jim Elliott, an American missionary, set his sights on going to the unreached tribes of Ecuador, his Christian parents asked him to consider whether his gifts would be better used among people in the United States. 
He replied with a scathing denunciation of the lukewarm American church. He went to South America where he and four others were murdered trying to tell a lost, savage tribe about the love of Jesus. They wasted their lives for Jesus. Mary's action reveals the proper basis for evaluating your actions. Now let's see. Do you do what you do because you love and treasure Jesus? Mary did not do this out of a duty or a practicality, but out of shared devotion for Christ. Mary did what she did because she had a perception of Christ that even the apostles at this point lacked. She gained this knowledge of Christ by sitting at his feet. Do we give God our best or our leftovers? If you can't, then just leave her alone. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and generous God, grant that we may gladly give you the one precious gift that we have to bring, the offering of our loyalty and our love, and enable us to walk in love for others, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to you. We ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us think about how we can be used. Even though I ask the children, it's also for you too. Amen. Together, let us say the affirmation of faith. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now have the pastoral prayer. Let us not only pray for ourselves, but pray for our neighbors, our friends, the world. Let me start again. I just put my mic on. <clears throat> For we are the members of one body, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Please let your perfume of your love flow through us, gracious God, as we pray for one another, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray all for the ministers of the gospel that they may faithfully proclaim your word and administer your holy sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth, particularly in what's going on with Russia and the Ukraine. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Take our works that we may find favor in your sight. Have command, compassion of those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Let us pray for our dear sister, Susan. Let me pray for my family members who suffer with rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes. And let us pray for all of those who have cancer in all kinds of different places in the body. Let us pray for the doctors and the nurses who are ministering, taking care of our loved ones that they will be sure to make sure they keep a watch on them and not let anything happen to them, especially while they're in the hospital or in nursing homes. We praise you for your saints who have been entered into our joy. Let us pray for all of those who are our dearly departed. 
Know that they are still with you in our hearts and our minds and in our lives in so many ways that they contributed to us while they were alive. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our community, for the life and the worship of this congregation, and for all those needs that are known to us. This will be the time if you would like to have a corporate prayer. Hearing none, let us now say the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us lead up to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now have the sacrament of Holy Communion. with all Christians of every time and place. It is a most fitting occasion to observe the sacrament of communion. In preparation for the sacrament, we invite you at home to look through your own kitchen to find bread and beverage. While there is rich symbolism in the elements which we traditionally use to celebrate the Lord's Supper, the church also has a long history of using the most fitting materials that are readily available at any given time and setting. So feel free to be creative and use what you have on hand. Now, let us celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Friends, this is the joyous feast of the people of God. They will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. O oh Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe, in your wisdom you made all things and sustains them by your power. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled, against you, refusing to trust and obey you. You did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. When we, shared, when we were slaves in Egypt, you freed us and led us through the waters of the sea. You fed us with heavenly food in the wilderness and satisfied our thirst from desert springs. On the holy mountain, you gave us your law to guide us in your way. Through the waters of Jordan, you led us into the land of your promise. And you sustained us in times of trial. You spoke through the prophets calling us to turn from our willful ways to ways of new obedience and righteousness. You sent your only son to be the way to eternal life. The invitation. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices and the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Together, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty. 
And blessed is Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. He took upon himself the weight of our sin and carried the burden of our guilt. He shared our life in every way and though tempted was sinless to the end. Baptized as your own, he went willingly to his death and by your power was raised to new life. And as dying and rising, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and spirit. Words of institution. We give you thanks. Now on the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and after breaking it, giving it to his disciples, saying, this is my body, broken, given for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. The ushers would come forward. Please hold your bread and your drink until everyone is served. Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, shed with my love, poured out with my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Take, drink, 
This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. When you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the glory of Jesus Christ coming again. Gifts of God for the people of God. Prayer after supper. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and we take this cup and we celebrate with joy the redemption for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice and praise of thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Christ is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in the mystery of every place. As this bread of Christ's body for us, send, out, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Together, the prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be as faithful disciples that our family live, may be part of the life of your kingdom. And our love be your love reaching out unto the life of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now offer our gifts to God so others might know the, the, that God's steadfast love is present with them in every moment. Amen. We're going to be um, creative this morning, and we're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to do the uh, hymn for offering.
Doxology, please stand as we praise God the Father, hymn 605. Let us say the prayer of dedication together. Bless me, dear generous God, that they may be used to find your children, children, children who wander in hunger, children who long to come home through our gifts. May all who wander set off for home, and may we celebrate and rejoice in your homecoming. Amen. Now let us remain standing to sing our closing hymn. 761 called us partners in Christ. the path to which God has called you. Do not get caught to the past or in the things that the world prizes, but welcome new things that God is doing. Take the new path that opens through the places of death, and may God pour life-giving waters into your wilderness. May Christ Jesus make you his own, and may the Holy Spirit strengthen you for the race that lies before you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. We will now have our postlude. 